What's going on guys, Jake here from The Fly Fiend. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a swinging fly. This right here is a tripled up bait fish. It's an awesome little pattern. Um, it imitates uh, a wide variety of bait fish that we'd find in the river. I primarily fish this for steelhead, um, but you can also use it for smallmouth bass and even walleye. Uh, we get a pretty good walleye run here in the spring from the lake and um, swing in anything that's white, um, they just destroy it. So it's a good little um, all round pattern and uh, you can use it for multiple species, uh, just not steelhead. So I'm gonna get a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get right into this tutorial. The hook I'm using with this fly is a Daiichi swing hook. This is their intruder hook. Um, this is a size two. Now I'm gonna add three little hot spots on here. Um, this is totally optional. I just like it, um, gives me a little bit more confidence in the fly and um, it can represent eggs, it can represent um, eyes, um, or it can just represent um, a little attractor for the fish to key in on and um, just for them to commit. So what I'm gonna be using is some Gulf um, Hot Fluorescent Orange um, UV Curing Resin. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit here. I'm gonna put one right behind the eye and I'm turning while I'm putting this in and what that's going to do is it's going to keep that little hot spot nice and round so I'm just going to cure this for about 10 seconds since it is pretty thick I want that UV to uh, penetrate through there and make sure it's nice and nice and cure. Now we're going to add another one right behind that. So it's definitely important to keep this moving or you're gonna have a, a lopsided spot. You can taper these down if you want. You could have a big one, then a small one, then a small one. You can keep them all the same size. I just uh, think it gives me a little bit more confidence in the fly with a little, little extra you don't see on too many, uh, too many swinging patterns. I think the fish can kind of just key on key in on it a little bit easier as well. So this last one's a little tricky because of the uh, hook point. You can't make a nice full spin. I'm just gonna cure this up. You don't want to put these too big because you don't want to uh, mess with that hook gap a lot. Uh, you want to try to keep it as big as possible um, just so uh, once you do hook a fish um, it's just easier to land. Um, I was thinking about putting just one big, um, like almost like an egg on there, but it would come down too far and it would um, really um, affect the way that this uh, wide gap hook um, is meant to be used for. So that's why I just put the three little ones and I think it's it's a big enough hot spot for fish to kind of key in on um, so it can represent eggs. Uh, if you use different colors it can represent eyes. Um, it's just a cool little um, uh, thing you can add to your hook uh, to kind of make it a little bit cooler and uh, different from all the other uh, swinging flies. So I'm gonna throw a shank in here and we'll get tying the actual fly now. So my preferred shank I like to tie this fly on is a 25 millimeter um, Senyo's articulated salmon and steelhead shank made by Fish Skull. Um, I like to keep this on the smaller side. Uh, you can tie these up to like a 40 mil shank, uh, but I think this 25, it just gives a nice little proportion and it's, um, it's just nice little compact. Uh, fly. You could also uh, swing this for um, resident trout as well. 
um, I would just put on a little bit smaller of a hook, like a size, um, like a size four. The thread we're gonna be using is UTC 70 denier in cream. And I'm gonna start my thread right on the shank. Putting down a nice little base. Now I'm gonna grab my hook with my wire. And for that I'm just gonna be using some uh, 50 pound uh, Power Pro braid. You just wanna make sure that that, that braid it's nice and flat right on top. Make some nice wraps down there. Then what I'm gonna do is bring my thread up. I'm gonna be putting um, lead eyes on here. So I just stop my th my um, wire right where I put these eye where I'm going to be putting my eyes on. What I do is I'm just going to pull this back, and I'm going to back wrap this in the side of the shank there that's open, so it kind of fills in that um, that kind of bump spot. And you're just going to add a lot more durability. It's not going to rip out on you the hook if you hook a big fish. So I'm gonna get this nicely cranked down. Now we can throw in some eyes. And for eyes we're just gonna be using some uh, size medium black uh, dumbbell eyes. These don't have, um, these are just the regular, don't have any fancy eyes on them or anything like that. So I'm just gonna throw these in. Make sure they're nice and tight, make sure they're nice and even. Not crooked, make sure they're right on the bottom. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of thin UV carrying resin. I'm just gonna put that right on top of those thread wraps. Then I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom. This is gonna hold these in place. They're not gonna move at all and it's just going to uh, strengthen up that those thread wraps at the uh, at the front. So I'm going to do a quick little cure here since it's just a thin this UV can get in there and cure it nice and nice and hard and they're not moving at all. Take my thread back. We're going to be tying in the body. So I want to make a dubbing loop. And since this is just 70 denier, I like to double up on my dubbing loop, just so I know it's not gonna break out on me. And ideally, I wanna keep my dubbing loop to that first return, because I still wanna put in flash, and I'm gonna be putting in two, two pieces of marabou. So I, uh, I just know from experience that if I leave probably about the size of the dumbbells back behind there, then I have enough to uh, tie in the rest of my materials and I'm not overcrowding that eye. So I'm going to grab a little bit of beeswax. Uh, you can use dubbing wax I'm on this. It's just going to hold that, that dubbing in. And for the body, we're going to be using some hairs ice dub, and this is just in the uh, natural hairs ear. So I'm going to pull a clump out of the pack. 
and I'm just going to align it all in my hand, just pulling it apart. I'm not ripping it, I'm just pulling it um, just to align all these fibers. We can just throw this in the dubbing loop. Spread it out. And I like to overdub this because when you brush it out, you're gonna be brushing out a lot of the, um, the bulk dub. So ideally, I wanna keep this about an inch and a half. Just like so. I'll spin that up. And since I doubled over this thread, I can I can really wrench down on it, not have to worry about it breaking out. Then I can just brush out all of that little part. As you can see, lots gets pulled out which is good, it keeps it nice and tight and sparse. You have lots of water flowing through that. I'm just gonna pull that up. Just use my finger to pull back all those fibers. I'm just gonna be making some nice open spiral wraps up this body. I can capture my dubbing loop, tie it off nice and tight. Give that a quick little brush. Just like so. Now we're actually gonna throw in another dubbing loop. This one we're just gonna throw in a little bit of flash Same thing with the beeswax or dubbing wax. And for that, we're gonna be using some uh, Senyo's Freckled Predator Wrap. This is in uh, UV Freckled Gold. I'm gonna cut about a half an inch length off this hank. And what I'm gonna do is since I cut that off straight, I'm just gonna put a little taper in that. It's like so. I'm gonna throw this in my dubbing loop. You kinda of wanna measure this to be about to the back of your hook bend. So I'm just gonna spread this out now. You wanna to try to make this as sparse and as spread out as possible. You're gonna get a lot more water going through it and a lot more movement rather than it just being a big clump. And it's just gonna hold water Just like so, so it's about a half, I pull it out to about a half inch, a little bit more. I'm just gonna get my scissors, cut super close to this side. That wax actually holds in the materials so they don't fall out of that loop as well. If you just put it in a dry, a dry loop, um, more than likely it, um, your um, material is just gonna slide out. So I'm gonna spin that up, come in and pick up 
pick all that out. I'm just going to pull it up to vertical again. And with this, I'm going to make open, open spiral wraps. I really want um, water to get through here. Try to space them out as much as possible. And you can just back wrap over that a bit. Cut out your little dubbing loop. Kind of just pull all these back. Just take a nice wrap over everything. Just like so. That's starting to look pretty good. As you can see, I have about um, one dumbbell width. And that's pretty much all I need to tie in two pieces of uh, marabou, which we're going to tie in next. We're going to be using, like I said, two pieces. Um, the first piece is going to be um, shad gray. This is just a strong marabou. I'm going to get one feather out. And I'm just going to strip about two inches off the bottom. And a little trick to kind of, you can kind of hold it up to where that the stem meets the uh, the fiber and you kind of want it to come almost to the hook point um, a little bit further um, is ideal now I'm just gonna tie this in right in front of this flash loop And when you're tying in any marabou or anything like that, it's really important to keep your little space here nice and flat. Um, it's going to be a lot easier when you're palmering this in um, to lay nice and flat. And it's not going to, um, the stem's not going to go crooked or anything like that on you. So I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here. Grab this stem. Pull that up to vertical. Then start palmering this in. You can definitely take your time with this. If you see anything starting to get tangled, just pick it out. You're gonna get much better end product when you take your time with this marabou and make sure that it's going in laying nice and flat. So I'm just going to come over, capture that stem, I can cut that stem out. Now I'm going to do is just pull back, and just back wrap. I'm just going to back wrap on these stems a bit so they don't pull out. Just like that. Now our second piece of marabou is going to be in the tan color. And the reason why I like to put two is just to give it a little contrast. Um, I really like this color combo. I've been tying a lot of flies, I'm fishing a lot of flies in this um, color combo just because it can, uh, it can mimic such a 
wide range of uh, bait fish you find in the river. So I'm going to prep this feather the exact same way I did with the gray one. My hackle pliers, just palmer this in. Just like so, then come under, capture that stem, that can cut it out, and you can just kind of clean up your head there. Now I just want to throw in a little bit more flash. And I'm just going to use a little bit more of the same uh, predator wrap I used for the body section. And I'm just going to grab probably, I'd say half inch. It's about half a dozen fibers. Put a nice taper in that. Just like so. We're going to put this right on top. I actually actually like to keep this a little bit longer because you can pull it, um, and once you're done, you can trim it. Um, it's a lot easier to trim. You can't add materials in once once it's all said and done. So I. Uh, I like to keep this longer than the, a little bit longer than the actual fly. Just like that. And I can just lift that up. Cut that out. Cover up those butt sections. Kind of like that. And if you want, you can use your nail if you need to and actually spread them out um, if they're kind of just all clumped up. The more water going through this, the more action it's going to have. Um, if this is just a big clump, you're just going to have one uh, piece of flash and uh, it's not going to look too, too pretty. It'll still work, I'm sure, but so I'm just going to throw a whip finish in here. Nice four or five turn whip finish. Make sure that's nice and tight. Cut out my thread. Now what I actually like to do is grab that same thin that I had, and just finish off this head with a little bit more thin. So I just put a nice little generous bubble on top that I can just grab My tweezers here. Just make sure all those thread wraps are covered. You can do one last cure and you'll be good to fish. And nothing's gonna get ripped out. That's that's a bomb bomb proof right there. There you go. Cool little pattern. You can fish it for tons of different species. Hope like taste tour guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the fly, you can drop that down in the comments and I will answer them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. 
Thanks a lot again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next fly tying tutorial.